Hi there, yep, the great and glorious seem to be famous one day from very lucky Nick Dutch here yet again. Right, talking today about um, spiritual parts basically. Uh, there seems to be roughly three main routes that individuals can go down. There's either the religious path where people follow certain ways of being, they follow certain belief structures, they follow certain ideas that have been given to them by other people, uh, which is okay as far as, as far as it goes. But that's also very limited in the fact that, uh, number one, it takes away personal freedom, it takes away personal choice, and it turns you into basically a puppet. You end up in a very, very safe world with very safe security limits, a very fixed rigid structure that you don't want to step out of in case of course you uh, burn in hell, get crushed by an ice giant or something equally unpleasant either in this world or in the next. And then there's the, well I suppose overlapping with that there's the spiritual development path where you use the texts and ideas of various religious and or self-development books to help you to grow up. Uh, which is the same thing, but a little less rigid and structured. Then there's the route of religious experience, which involves performing certain exercises on a regular basis for the purposes of having some kind of sensation that will either demonstrate to you the presence of God or will somehow or other blow your mind to the possibility of there being some kind of spiritual reality. That seems to be possibly a bridge towards the final stage, which is that of supernatural experience, which is what essentially I'm promoting. Uh, I would say the, the varieties of spiritual experience are more or less, well, I would say more or less essential, which is why prayer and meditation uh, is so important as far as trying to develop any supernatural results. But the problem with the, the route of trying to get spiritual experience is that it can provide wonderful, blissed out states of mind. And some people see that as the be all and end all of everything and end up just uh, evangelizing for that state of mind or that way of being. Um, I suppose there is a possible fourth way and that is the route of superstition in which um, one performs silly exercises or silly phrases which are probably the bastardizations of previous cultures or previous religious structures, ceremonies or ideas which have um, been passed on through superstition rather than being useful to anyone. It's um, become something similar to the religious path but um, it's, it's not even that good. It's um, sub-rational and as such is um, very difficult. But if you can get to the point of spiritual experience and move beyond that, then you're essentially in, then you're in the world that I'm in, the world of trying to find out essentially what's, uh, what's real with the universe. Um, as I'm sure you can understand, when an ordinary human being goes through schooling, you're explained throughout your various years the workings of, let's say, the natural world, the scientific world, and all the rest of it, to varying degrees of complexity as time goes by. The reason for this is the understanding you have when you're 18 years old is beyond what that which a four-year-old could understand or should understand to keep themselves safe. Going through religious, spiritual and occult learning is more or less the same because you can start off at a very low level when you have a very simplistic, very low resolution a very monochrome, very black and white understanding of the universe. That can then expand to a few more possibilities. You can then maybe have a few spiritual experiences. And then you can either revert back to the more basic model of the world which you used to have when you were a child in religion, in religious terms or in spiritual terms or in occult terms, which a lot of people do because they can't handle the more complex subjects. Or they realize that everything they were told at that stage is essentially useless as far as the further development that they want to try and reach and then you've got to throw all that away which is essentially one of the things which I'm trying to help you to do hopefully I can do that through 
you know what I'm saying the various videos here more writings that I'll eventually get around to doing when I'm not being so bloody lazy uh, <laughs> uh, so I can try and get this um, this message out so you are a part of a tradition it's necessary to be critical to look back to see whether you're actually relying upon this more basic level that you were taught earlier on or whether you're trying to move beyond that to something more complex uh, I would also say that as a human being, because I am one, okay, um, it is sometimes necessary to temporarily move into a simplistic model of the world, a simplistic model of spirituality. Uh, during times of crisis, during times of stress, and during si times of disquiet and discomfort, uh, such as stress with money, stress with work, stress with the boss, all the rest of it, okay? I'm a human being, I'm like that too, occasionally. I don't turn that into modus operandi for the rest of my life, but that's a tiny aspect of uh, my being. I suppose rather like a lapsed Christian who chooses to become an atheist and then at times of extreme stress then goes back to church. But in that particular case, that's a little hypocritical because when they're out of church, they're still atheists, all right? Uh, in my case, I've still got this whopping great question mark over the world because, you know, you can have loads of occult experiences. All you can do is say, this is what seems to be real. We don't know any further than that. We can't then turn around to you and say, this is real, this is solid, this is concrete, this is fixed. Uh, I can stay in this state of ambivalence um, quite happily ever after and choose which state I want to be in on my sort of like religious band wave, I sort of, you know, um, frequency, uh, I, you know, by analogy. <coughs> depending upon what's going on in my life and my own personal growth, development, sanity and safety. Uh, however, my goal is still to push beyond that and reach the levels of the highest point of supernatural efficacy that I can possibly get and supernatural controllability that I can possibly get within my own limitations uh, and of course trying to push my limitations aside bit by bit with the progression of the years. Uh, you know, that's, um, that's where I am at. Uh, hopefully this model of the understanding of um, religious and magical knowledge and spiritual knowledge will help you to work out what you can what you can keep, what you can throw away, what's useful and what's not. Speak to you again soon. Bye for now.